I will talk now about how we represent graphs, right? So when we talk about graphs and we want to represent as input to, a, to an algorithm or to a computer program, of course, we, we, cannot, we cannot just keep drawing it. To represent a graph to an algorithm, the algorithm has to have a data structure or a structure that represents the graph. So to represent a graph, one of the ways of doing that is what we call an adjacency list. And in adjacency list, basically, we specify we specify the list of the nodes in that graph, and for each one of them, we describe the set of its neighbors. So let me first start with an undirected graph. So suppose I have this graph A, B, C, D, and we have this connection. So what is the adjacency list here? The adjacency list will be a list of, of the nodes here. So it will be like this, and for every node, so this will be a list here, so think about it as a list. And for every node, we will put a set of the neighbors. So for A, the neighbors of A are C. B, what are the neighbors of B? Nothing, it's, M sorry, for B, I apologize about that. The neighbors of B are C and D. What about the neighbors of C? C has A and B and D as its neighbors. What about D? For D, the neighbors are B and C. Okay, so this is an adjacency list representation of this graph. So we have a list of these nodes, and every node we have followed by a colon set of its neighbors. Okay, now if you look at it, there is redundancy there. In this undirected graph, A and C are neighbors. So A and C are neighbors. We see that C is in the neighborhood of A, but also we see that A is in the neighborhood of C. So we are showing it twice and this and we we, we usually don't uh, you know avoid this redundancy if i have an uh, if i have a directed graph it's not much different but we have now to respect the the direction so if i have something like this if i have this is my graph the adjacency list would look like this sorry a what are what nodes do we have an edge from A to them? From A to them. So A has an edge to B. What about B? Does B have an edge to something? It's to C. What about C? Does it have any edge to, to something? It's to D. What about D? D doesn't have an edge to, to any other node. Therefore, it is the empty set here. So this is the adjacency list description of a graph that's directed or undirected. Another way to represent the graphs is using an adjacency matrix. So adjacency matrix is if we have n nodes and imagine the nodes are labeled one through n and the adjacency matrix is going to be an n by n matrix where we put one in row i column j. If nodes i and j are connected by an edge, we put zero in row i column j if nodes i and j are not connected by an edge. So if I look at this graph here, so this is A, B, C, D, then the adjacency matrix is a four by four matrix like this. So each row corresponds to one of the nodes, each column corresponds to one of the nodes. And I said now, is there an edge between A and A? We don't usually, we don't allow no edges between the node and itself in this case. We have all zeros here in the diagonal. There is an edge from A to B. There is an edge from A to C. There is no edge from A to D. There is an edge from B to A. There is an edge from B to C. There is no edge from B to D. There is an edge from C to A. There is an edge from C to B. There is no edge from C to D. D has no edge to A, to B, to C, or to itself. So this is the adjacency matrix representation of this graph. If I have the graph being directed something like this so this is a b c d then again we have to respect the direction and the direction if we have talk about an edge from u to v u is on the rows and v is on the column of the matrix so if we have a b c d e a b c d sorry not e is there an edge from A to A? No. From B to B? No. From C to C? No. D to D? No. Is there an edge from A to B? Yes. Is there an edge from A to C? No. The edge is from C to A. From A to C, there is no edge. Therefore, this is zero. 
Is there an edge from A to D? No. Is there an edge from B to A? No. Is there an edge from B to C? Yes. Is there an edge from B to D? No. Is there an edge from C to, one, to A? Yes. Is there an edge from C to B? No. Is there an edge from C to D? Yes. Is there an edge from D to A? No. Is there an edge from D to B? No. Is there an edge from D to C? No. This is the adjacency matrix for this directed graph here. It's very important when we talk about graphs and we want to talk about, uh, you know, running time of algorithms that, that work on graphs to know how we represent the input. We have to be specific about how the input is represented. Is it as an adjacency list or adjacency matrix? And in, which in each case, what is the input size that we are talking about? So if we describe a graph in terms of adjacency list, the input is usually denoted by two parameters, n, which is the number of nodes, and m, that's the number of edges. If the graph is represented in terms of adjacency matrix, the number of nodes is sufficient because we don't have much control over the matrix. The matrix is n by n. The fact that it has m1s or m0s and stuff like that, it doesn't matter. So when the graph is represented as an adjacency matrix, the input is usually the parameter denoting the input size is n. When the, n, when the graph is represented as an adjacency list, n and m are the, the parameters that control the input. The one last thing I want to say here about it is that each one of the representations can provide, you know, benefit in some cases over the other. So, for example, when the graph is sparse, which basically means it contains very few edges. So here is a graph that is sparse. This is a graph in five nodes that is sparse. It has only two edges. Is it preferable here to use adjacency list or adjacency matrix? If you think about an adjacency matrix, if you look at the adjacency matrix for this, A, B, C, D, E, it's going to be so much waste of memory to store this graph because most of the matrix is just zero. So if we have A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, really the only ones in it are A, B. So A, B is one and B, A is one. And E, D here, D, E is one and E, D is one. The rest are all zeros. So imagine that the graph had 100 nodes and only two edges. You will, have, you will be allocating memory for a 100 by 100 matrix that will only have four ones in it. That's a waste of, of memory. On the other hand, if we use an adjacency list, we save a lot of memory because, you know, for A, we will know that B is its neighbor. For B, it's A. For C, it's empty. For D, it's E, and for E, it's D. And this is the representation. This is much better, much more economic to use in, in uh, adjacency list than adjacency matrix when it is sparse. What happens when the graph is dense? So when the graph is, you know, has a lot of edges, okay? So a lot of edges like this, for example. This is a very dense graph. Well, when it is dense, again, the matrix is still going to be 5 by 5. The adjacency list is also going to be close to 5 by 5 because it's going to have basically almost all nodes are neighbors of every node. But in this case, the adjacency matrix could be better in terms of running time because of one specific thing about matrices. If I want to know whether C is connected to D, accessing this entry in the matrix, accessing this entry in the matrix here, is one operation to say is CD in the matrix uh, one this is on constant number of operations if I want to know whether D is a neighbor of C and imagine C has some neighbors now I have to scan the whole set of neighbors to find whether D is there so when the graph is very dense in terms of running time in terms of amount of memory ma the matrix and the adjacency list are almost the same but in terms of running time, we could gain by using the matrix because the access to a certain specific element in it is very, very quick. Okay, so this is the difference between adjacency matrix and adjacency list. We, use, we, we can use either of them. In most algorithms, we assume that the input is given in terms of the adjacency list.
but that doesn't have to be. But however, I want to emphasize something that when we analyze the running time of a graph algorithm, an algorithm that runs on graphs, we have to be very explicit on how we are assuming the graph is represented, adjacency list or adjacency matrix.